This is Twit. This episode of i5 for the iPhone is brought to you by Gazelle, the fast and simple way to sell your used gadgets. Find out what your used iPhone, iPad, and other Apple products are worth at gazelle.com. Welcome to i5 for the iPhone, episode 129. i5 covers the latest iPhone apps, tips and tricks, and of course, news. I'm Megan Maroney. Let's do this. Have you heard of this thing they're calling email? And did you know that you could check it on your phone? Well, of course you do. According to a recent study by the research group Flurry, we now spend an average of two hours and 57 minutes each day on mobile devices. And I'm guessing a pretty large chunk of that time is devoted to checking our email. So this week, I decided to do a roundup of iPhone apps that will help you win the never-ending battle against your overflowing inbox. Number one is the Gmail app. And by number one, I just mean the first app on my in no particular order list. The Gmail app is not my favorite. In fact, it's pretty basic. But if you use Gmail, there's no shame in using the Gmail app for iPhone. It's free and it's miles ahead of the built-in iOS mail app when it comes to managing your email. You can switch between, between up to five accounts, search through your email, and respond to Google Calendar invites right from your inbox. If you like the way Gmail works on the web and you already have an organizational system that's based on custom labels, then I say download the Gmail app and call it a day. But if you want a few more weapons in your email fighting arsenal, then stick with me. The war against email is on, people. It is on. Number two is cloud magic. I used to be the type of person who methodically filed emails into an elaborate hierarchy of folders. But ever since Gmail was invented, I realized that searching was so much easier. Cloud Magic is a pretty standard iOS email app, but where it really shines is search. It's fast and it gives you real time results as you're typing. Cloud Magic lets you see all your different emails in one box, whether you use Gmail or Microsoft Exchange or Outlook or Yahoo Mail, iCloud, or IMAP accounts. It also includes a feature called Cards that lets you take emails and use them with other productivity apps like Evernote or Todoist or Pocket and more. Cloud Magic is free, but if you want to upgrade to Cloud Magic Pro, you can pay $4.99 a month or $44.99 a year. Number three is Mailbox. I've been using Mailbox as my primary email app on my iPhone and my iPad for a few months, and my favorite feature is the ability not just to swipe and archive your email, but to swipe and schedule your email to come back at a certain time, either for a certain date or some vague point in the not-so-distant future like later today, tomorrow evening, in a month, or the charmingly vague someday. Mailbox is owned by Dropbox, so if you Dropbox is your go-to cloud client, then Mailbox makes a lot of sense. Unfortunately, it's just for Gmail, so you'll have to use another app for other email clients. Mailbox is free, and there's also a free desktop client, so you can use it on your PC or your laptop, too. This episode of i5 for the iPhone is brought to you by Gazelle. New from a Gazelle, now you can buy certified pre-owned iPhones, Samsung Galaxy phones, and iPads directly from Gazelle. If you've lost or broken your phone, a certified pre-owned device is a great way to buy a low-cost replacement device. Gazelle still offers great deals on trade-ins for your old device. Visit gazelle.com to see what devices are available from Gazelle in certified pre-owned condition. Here are some benefits of buying certified pre-owned from Gazelle. Devices are available in two conditions, certified like new and certified good. Certified good devices show some gentle signs of wear, but offer consumers who want to save a little extra money and have a great device at a great price. Certified pre-owned devices are backed by a 30-day risk-free return policy. Here are some benefits of trading into Gazelle. You get paid in hard, cold cash. Payment is fast within a few days of when Gazelle receives your item. It's risk-free. Gazelle will also wipe your data for free. It's also trustworthy, it's easy, there's free shipping, and most items qualify for a free box. What's your iPhone worth? Take a minute and go to gazelle.com to find out. Number four is Hop. If you feel like email is so 1998 and texts or other instant messaging is really your game, then I suggest you try Hop. It has the look and feel of a messenger program and works really well for sending short messages. 
And if you can convince your friends to use Hop, then you can chat in real time without the delay of emails and also switch over to voice or video call pretty easily. You can swipe, you can archive, you can search, you can easily assign different notifications to different senders, but there is no way to organize messages with tags or folders. I've been using Hop on my phone when an email conversation is better suited to chat, but I wouldn't probably use it as my main phone email app. Number five is Outlook, which I promised you last week that I would review today. Outlook for iOS is only a few weeks old, but so far it's my pick. Outlook is certainly the best choice for an Exchange Outlook account through Office 365, but it's also great for Outlook.com, Gmail, iCloud, and Yahoo Mail. Outlook for iOS includes features similar to Mailbox that allow you to swipe a message out of your inbox and schedule it to return in a few hours tomorrow morning or the time of your choosing. I also love that, love that it gives you direct access to your calendar and lets you easily attach files from OneDrive, Dropbox, Box, Google Drive, and many other cloud storage accounts. I think my favorite feature of the Outlook app is the focused inbox. It works a lot like Google's priority mail feature, but I think it's even more user-friendly. Focus lets you see your most important emails and other lets you see everything else. Now, if you watched last week's episode of iPad Today, you know that there's at least one blogger complaining about security with the app, but those claims are a bit overblown. Now, I personally don't think any email account is really secure. I think we've learned that. And I'm sure that as this app evolves, more security features, more secure features will be added. The new Outlook app is based on the email app Accompli that Microsoft acquired late last year. And bonus tip, last week I heard that rumors that Microsoft was planning to acquire Sunrise, my favorite iOS calendar app, so I look forward to seeing what they plan to do with that. And I hope it involves holograms. Now you might be wondering why I didn't mention Google's invite-only inbox email app. Well, that's because they haven't given me an invite, and I've asked several times. I've even said please. Is there an email app that you're using that I didn't mention? Email feedback to i5 at twit.tv. And that does it for this episode. Thanks for stopping by. All of the apps, links, and other info from the show can be found at twit.tv slash i5. And if you have ideas or questions or general feedback, email i5 at twit.tv or leave us a voicemail by calling 614-ON-I-5. I'm Megan Maroney. We'll see you next week on i5 for the iPhone. Bandwidth for i5 for the iPhone is provided by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com.